So we've talked about dot products as the tool we use when we multiply two matrices together. And then we've also talked about dot products in the context of vector multiplication. When we multiply two vectors together, sometimes that result is a dot product. But let's go ahead and just refresh our memory of that formula. We can use any variables that we want, but let's go ahead and use a and b. When we take the dot product of the vectors a and b, we write a little dot in between them like this. And if we're in two dimensions, if both of these are two-dimensional vectors, then we could say that a is a vector with two components that we call a1 and a2. And then b, the vector b, is a two-dimensional vector with components b1 and b2. When we take their dot product, all we do is multiply together the first set of components. So we would take a1 times b1. So we'll say a1, b1. And then we just add. And we keep adding until we run out of components. With two-dimensional vectors, we're done just after two components because each of these only has two components. So we multiply a2 by b2, and we get a2, b2. And this is the dot product. We can also take dot products in higher dimensions. So let's say a and b aren't defined in R2, they're defined in R3. So we have the two vectors, vector a, defined in R3 would have three components, a1, a2, and a3. And then the vector b defined in R3 would have to have three components, so b1, b2, and b3. As you would suspect, the dot product of the vector a by the vector b, or sometimes we say this is a dotted with b, that means the same thing as the dot product of a and b, then we simply just multiply corresponding entries. So we again say a1, b1, and then we add to that the product of corresponding entries a2 and b2, and then we add to that the product of the last set of corresponding entries, a3, b3. And so obviously, as you can imagine, this works for n dimensions. We have two dimensions, we have three dimensions. We could go up into four or five, all the way to n dimensions, any dimensions, and we just continue to multiply corresponding entries and add those up to get the dot product of any pair of n dimensional vectors. Now we mentioned this briefly before when we talked about vector operations. But if we're expressing the vectors a and b as matrices, so let's say we're given them in this form, the vector a is the vector a1 and a2, and the vector b is b1 and b2, right? Sometimes we write vectors this way, we express them as column matrices. Well, if we want to find the dot product of these two, we always have to multiply a row matrix by a column matrix. So we need to flip one of these onto its side to make it a row matrix or a row vector so that we have the row vector first and the column vector second. So we could write the dot product of A and B as either A1, A2, so this is the row matrix or the row vector, multiplied by the column vector B1, B2, and the result would be the same value we get when we use this method up here. Or equivalently, we could do this in the opposite order and we could say b1, b2 for the row vector or row matrix, and then a1, a2 for the column vector or column matrix. All three of these, this one, this one, and then this method up here, are going to give the same value for the dot product. The other thing that we want to remember about dot products is that we can use dot products to find the length of a vector. Remember earlier, we said that we had a length formula, we'll say the length of the vector a. We said that the length of a vector a was equal to the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared, where these a1 and a2 are the components of a, a1 and a2. Well, what we want to realize is that if we square both sides of this, so we say the length of the vector a squared, when we square the right-hand side, we will get rid of the square root and we'll be left with a1 squared plus a2 squared. 
what we see is that this right hand side here is just the vector a dotted with itself or the vector a multiplied by itself the dot product of a and a because if i take the dot product of a with a that's going to look like this the vector a dotted with itself or the dot product of a and a that's going to be equal to a1 times a1 plus a2 times a2 or a1 squared plus a2 squared and we see that that value is the value that we have right here so the formula that we really want to pull out from this are these two components here this one and this one because what that tells us is that the square of the length of a vector is equal to the vector dotted with itself in other words if I take the dot product of a vector with itself I'm going to get the square of its length so we're just trying to understand that we have a relationship between the dot product and the length of the vector and we want to remember this going forward because this will be a helpful relationship so as an example let's use this formula that relates the square of the length to the dot product to show that it works for a vector in three dimensions so let's say that i maybe have the vector b and we're going to use the vector negative one two and three i want to say that the length of b squared is going to be equal to the dot product of b with itself and i know how to take the dot product of b with itself i just take negative one times negative one i add to that two times two and then i add to that three times three and when i sum that all up i get one plus four plus nine or 14. so i know that b dotted with itself gives me a dot product of 14 and i know that 14 is the square of the length of b so if i wanted to i could take the square root of both sides and i could say the length of b squared and i'm going to take the square root there is equal to the square root of 14. when i take the square root of a square those two things cancel this is the vector those two things cancel and i'm just left with the length of b i can say the length of b is equal to the square root of 14. so i have that relationship and i can use it in two dimensions or in three dimensions and then the last thing we want to say is that we have a set of properties that all hold for the dot product so first of all the dot product is commutative which should make sense to us because we've already shown here that when we expressed the vectors as matrices here we were able to multiply a by b and then here we were able to multiply b by a which should make sense to us because if we go back to the original formula here for the dot product of course we can see that even if we flip b with a and we say take the dot product of b and a instead of a and b i'm still just going to be multiplying the first components of a and b a1 and b1 and i'm still just going to be multiplying the second components of a and b a2 and b2 and i'm adding them up so even if we had this order flipped and we said this was going to be equal to b1 a1 plus b2 a2 that's what it would look like if we flipped the order we can see that this is going to have the same value as this expression here so the dot product is commutative the dot product is also distributive which means that if i have some vector we'll say the vector a multiplied by the vector v plus the vector c an expression like this and we'll put that dot in there to indicate the dot product that i simply distribute the a across the b and the c maintaining that dot product so this is equal to or it's the same thing as the dot product of a and b plus the dot product of a and c so that's my distributive property that holds for the dot product as well and then the associative property also holds for the dot product and that simply tells us that if we have some scalar so let's use a real example here let's say we have the scalar three and that's multiplied by let's even use different letters here let's say the vector r and we're saying 
take that and dot it with the vector s. Well, this is the same thing. I can pull the 3 out and say this is the same thing as 3 times the dot product of r with s. So we're associating the values differently. That's the associative property by pulling out this scalar and associating the two vectors with each other as a dot product instead of associating the scalar with the first vector and then dotting it with the other vector. All three of these properties, commutative, distributive, and associative, hold for the dot product.